Okay, well, hello everybody. My name is Annette Webb, and myself and Gareth are your hosts today. So I'll just take you to the uh, introduction slide with our names on. So welcome everybody, really pleased with the turnout. Okay, so today we've got um, Richard Morgan with us from Cardiff and he's going to share his experiences with Office 365. So uh, to start off with, uh, just to get the ball rolling, I'd like to present um, a poll to you. So uh, I would just like to know who here um, is using OneDrive for business. So if you could just indicate on there, that would be really useful. Brilliant. Okay. So that's quite a few people. I'm just going to um, bring up another poll. So um, I'd like to know who is using Office 365? Wowzer. That's a lot. Okay. That looks good to me. Okay, that's fantastic. And thirdly, I'm just going to bring up another one. And who is using Yammer? Okay, so that's less popular. Oh! Okay. That's moving as we speak. Okay, so let's just uh, show the results to you for that one. So, can you see it now? Excellent. So yes, so there's yes, 48% or 50%-ish and 17% considering it. Okay. So, I'm going to go back to the presentation. And I'm just going to remind you of our forum, which um, gets more popular at certain times, especially uh, like our Spotlight Conference, which is later on in May, um, or later on this year in May in, in Southampton. But you are very welcome to go to this web address digitalskillsanddevelopment.ning.com and join our community. So that's a great place to um, ask questions of the community. So today's webinar is about collaboration um, within the um, institutions and using Office 365. And we have Richard Morgan. So I'm just going to introduce Richard and he's going to take over. Good afternoon, everyone, um, from a cloudy Cardiff. Um, so today, um, I'm going to take you through some of our experiences with Office 365, and in particular, looking at the collaborative tool set that is provided by, by this platform, and talk a little bit about our experiences of rolling out OneDrive for Business and also Yammer and then to consider what our next steps are, will be specifically around Office 365 groups, um, SharePoint Online, and the very latest addition to Suite Microsoft Teams. Um, my glamorous assistants on, on this one, the chat line, are Chris Graves, who's our enablement management manager, and Lynn Reese, who manages the Office 365 team. <laughs> Okay, so this is a quote, quote from Forrest Gump, which kind of summarizes our experiences with Office 365. Um, it's a bit like a box of chocolates. You never quite know what you're going to get. Um, and certainly over the last couple of years, there have been a lot of changes in this platform sometimes, and you don't always know when those changes are going to occur. 
Um, so previously in Cardiff, we had a collaborative, our collaborative environment was provided by an on-premises IBM software. So for mail and calendaring, we had a Domino Notes service. Um, and within that also, we had a same time service which provided instant messaging. So that, that was about the mid noughties, if you like, about 2007 onwards. We also had a collaboration platform with wikis and blogs provided by IBM Connections and also document repositories provided by Lotus Quicker. Now, these weren't universally popular. Um, the mail and calendaring um, system was okay, but it was very support intensive. Our team had to spend a lot of time patching the Domino servers and also with the sort of change in the environment with mobile devices becoming more prevalent. The iPhone came around and started to come around at that point. People wanted access to their email remotely. Um, and though IBM did offer a solution for that, most of our iPhone users were using IMAP to connect to our Domino service, which then caused problems on our back end. Um, so this wasn't wasn't great. Um, oh, pardon. Um, so because of that, and because of the need to meet um, ever, you know, ever requirements of people, we we decided to evaluate our our mail and calendaring provision, and we basically looked at Office 365 and Google Apps. And to cut a long story short, um, we chose Office 365. Um, and at that time, 365 had actually just evolved from live at Edu. So it was very early on in, in the maturity of the platform. So it was Exchange Online and Link that we're providing the IM. The scope of the program was purely to migrate email and calendaring. Um, and we didn't at that time consider SharePoint, though we always knew that SharePoint would become a factor in our um, move to Office 365. But at that time, the program was restricted to that. So, so the focus, as I said, was on mail and calendaring. We provided IM for staff, but not for students. Um, so, and to this day, we currently don't provide IM for students with our Office 365 platform. It's generally been well received, um, and it certainly relieved the pressure on the um, mail team to maintain a mail service. Now there are other challenges around that as we will dis as we will discover, but effectively things have checked it's it's much easier to support from from an infrastructure point of view. So our current provision is we obviously provide mail via exchange online. We did have Skype for Business was providing our IM service. Sorry, I'm having problems with my headphones here. Sorry. There we are. Um, Skype for Business provided our IM service. We've now moved on to a unified comms service, which is a Skype for Business on-premises thing. So we now have a hybrid environment with Skype running on our on campus. Um, we've released, we have OneDrive for Business enabled for staff. Um, not currently students, but we do have plans to do that. Um, Yammer is available to staff and students. We also have MS Project Online available to specific users. These, this is made available to people who are working program managers and project staff across the university. And we also provide Office Pro Plus for staff and students. Um, we do have most other applications available, and Office 365 groups 
is, is available to people, though we don't currently support that as a service. Um, so we've got Sway available. The only things that we've switched off is Office 365 video, because um, we were concerned about bandwidth and usage of file space on that. And until recently, we blocked the Outlook client, the Outlook app, sorry, um, for mobiles because of where the um, where that service was located, because it was originally running off Amazon servers in California. They've now moved that to the um, trust center, so we, we've made that available to our users now. But we've taken a generally very light touch to um, Office 365. If Microsoft switched something on, unless we believe there are governance issues, we leave it, leave it on. Okay, so moving on to OneDrive for business. Um, now, the driver for the release of this as a service wasn't actually anything to do with collaboration. Um, the driver was actually a program set up by the university three years ago called the Information Security Framework. And the program aim was, was to manage the risk of data leakage within the university. Now, so for ex and OneDrive was just a component of that. Other components of that were a laptop encryption program, also training staff in, in um, making them aware of the risks of data leakage, um, and a training module to support that. And then from a OneDrive perspective was to t tackle the issue where we have lots of people using software like Dropbox, um, which, which was the um, file and sync sharing favored by many of our users, and I guess that's not different from any other institution. Um, so key problems for us from that point of view was where the data was stored. It's not stored on a um, approved location. So with Office 365, it's stored in Dublin, Amsterdam. Our, our government department have approved that, and that's a place where we can store data. Not so with Dropbox. And another problem with Dropbox is the fact that if people set up their own personal Dropbox accounts, then they don't. We, we as a university, don't have access to that information if we need to manage it. If people leave the university or, God forbid, pass away, um, so we. So OneDrive as a business as an alternative to Dropbox. Okay, so we made that decision in 2015, which seems a long time ago. But we actually only rolled out to staff at the end of November 2017. So, what happened? Why did we take so long to roll that out? Um, well, I can say that the delay was pretty much down to the Microsoft Groove client, which was the old OneDrive for Business client um, provided to do file sync and sharing by Microsoft. This, quite frankly, was not fit for purpose. Um, we spent a lot of time on this, um, and I think it, Microsoft, I think Microsoft themselves acknowledged that at that time their sync client wasn't fit for purpose. So we felt we couldn't make that available in the condition that it was um, at that time. So we then waited until Microsoft spent some time deploying a new client, which was based around the OneDrive personal client. And takes that we actually enrolled on the uh, Microsoft TAP program, which gave us early access to the, to the client um, and fed back to Microsoft our feedback. It, and then over a period of a few months, you could see the performance of the client improved. And Microsoft actually released that um, at the end of December 2016. However, even at that point, there were still issues with the client, not so much from a syncing perspective, but from the fact that um, if you had the two clients installed on your workstation, um, they, got in, they got in the way of each other. And there was a great potential there for um, confusion amongst users, um, and knowing which OneDrive client um, 
to, to pick and to work. So Microsoft made, did some more work on that, and by the middle, by the summer of 2016, we were ready to um, to uh, move forward with that. So that really explains our delay in doing that. So in our rollout, now, now um, we um, created training materials, and we provided training sessions and guidance in how to use OneDrive and an appropriate way of using OneDrive. Um, at the same time, before, before OneDrive was released, we'd actually released Yammer as a service to the university. So we set up Yammer groups to provide forums for discussion for support staff on this, and that we found to be very useful to engage with staff on, on this. Um, so that rollout was quite successful. So we rolled out in early life service in November, um, and we've since then we've been monitoring the desk calls that we have with it to 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 ensure that we are actually able to support it and to to generate FAQs on what on OneDrive for Business. Okay, so some key, some points around OneDrive. OneDrive is essentially for personal work files, so files just relating to the user and not groups. It's not designed for group collaboration, um, though you can do place, you can share files with people. Um, an important point here that we discovered in our sort of doing due diligence around the product is there is actually no SLA around backup of OneDrive files. And before we before users use OneDrive, we, provide, we advise them to back up any important data onto other systems. Um, and that's actually what's stated on the Microsoft web pages. Okay. Um, we do have an MS Premier support. Um, agreement at Cardiff, and through that, we are able to request a restore if something goes wrong with somebody's files and they can't get them back from versioning or from the recycle bin. We can then have we can we can then request a restore. But the restore will only for up to 14 days previously. Um, so so that is something to be to note. Um, whether people actually Back up all their data on it. We don't know, but um, we've had no requests for backups at the moment. So, um, and currently, if people do lose their files, they can get them back from from the recycled bin or look at previous versions. Um, we don't advertise this as a replacement for our central file store service. I know some people. We have had people talk about that as something. That may be possible in the future, but at the moment we don't advertise that as a replacement for that. And after discussions with Microsoft, we don't actually, we haven't gone further down the line of looking into mapping drives. Again, that's something I'm aware that people have looked at, but our understanding from Microsoft is that they that they don't actually support that, and it's not something they want necessarily want to encourage um, on OneDrive. Okay, so successes and challenges around OneDrive. So, of course, the desk have been manageable. We haven't really been inundated um, with calls five a week. Um, the biggest, the biggest issue have we, we've had people confused between the personal and business version. So, it's the same client that does the sync syncing from the desktop. Um, and one white cloud and one blue cloud, which is the business side, um, and people sometimes are a bit confused about which one they sh they should use, particularly if they've got a current OneDrive account. Usage has gone up to about eight terabytes, um, so that's from last November. We the biggest single user has got about 684 gigabytes. So we've not yet approached the five terabyte, um, the one terabyte limits, um, and we've not needed to ask for 
for the individual um, five terabytes that Microsoft will provide um, to, 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 to the users. Um, one of the challenges is that Microsoft, and this is across 365 generally, but certainly probably more with the collaboration tools, is that they make changes to the interface. So, for example, um, I was giving, I've been giving sessions, or I was giving sessions on the OneDrive client, um, sync client um, session to our tier two technical staff. Um, gave it one day, fine. Went to the next day, right clicked on something, and the menu had changed. So these things are pushed out. They're pushed. Um, most of them are flagged, but some aren't flagged. So little changes can happen, um, something to be aware of. Um, they also make changes to default behavior. One which caught us out recently was when you were sending a sharing link, the default was just share with, with, with yourself or with the person that you were sharing with. They then changed that to share it. That link was open to anybody. So you could send a link to a person, and then they could forward that link um, for other people to open, which is fine if you wanted to do that but the default behavior had been more secure previously. Um, since then, we've discovered that you can switch that on and off um, at the back end on the admin console. Um, but again, this constant, this, this constant change um, does happen. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, MS Premier support, we found this to be invaluable, um, We both from a business as normal to report issues with Microsoft, but also um, when we were rolling out or in the process of trying to roll out OneDrive for business, we've op we opened many, many calls with Microsoft about that, and I think that's been a key key benefit. Um, it costs, but I think, I, personally, I think that's something that is well worth investing for. Um, we've um, my technical lead, Matt, on this has given Microsoft a very hard time on this, and I think it's worth 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 every penny. So our next steps with OneDrive for Business. So uh, we're going to release it to students, subject to approval from the Education Steering Group. So we plan to do that probably for the start of next term. Um, in terms of OneDrive itself, we will continue to monitor and document changes. You do need to keep an eye on the message center in the admin um, console um, where where changes are posted. Um, this this tells you what's, what's coming. Um, moving forward with the sync client, um, the latest version of the sync client allows you to sync SharePoint libraries um, and files within groups. Um, so there's that, that's something we'll be looking to roll out shortly. Um, and also, I don't think this is NDA. I'm pretty sure Microsoft, this has come out. Microsoft are introducing placeholders with the OneDrive client so that all your OneDrive for Business files will be visible on your desktop, even though um, they won't necessarily be downloaded to that, um, to that client. So that's something we'll be looking very keen to um, see happen. So that's OneDrive. Richard. Sorry. Um, can we just take um, a bit of a stop there? Uh, there's been some really interesting uh, conversation going in the background with a few questions and answers going on um, via your colleague Lynn, who has been coming up with some really good, interesting uh, stuff. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. That makes sense. So just a bit of a summary then, uh, and thank you to Lynn, by the way, and Chris. <laughs> um, okay, so Hazel asked a question, why did you decide not to give uh, instant messaging to students? And Lynn uh, said that um, that you've, you as an institution felt that it was too accessible and there were other solutions available in the education uh, part of the institution. So that was interesting. Um, Lorraine from St George's said that um, everything was switched on and um, she, uh, from what I could see in the chat, she didn't feel that it was a problem and somebody asked, well, 
how did you control the situation about any um, random dodgy group names? Um, and Lynn said, actually, uh, there's only actually been one in two years that's had to be taken off. So, so that was quite interesting. I I'd probably like, to... yeah. Well, I'd like to know the name of that. But don't... yeah, you can tell me later, Richard. Thank you. Um, so. Team was it? Oh. I can't remember. Mm. Yeah. We'll 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 uh, yeah okay. <laughs> Okay, so, um, but that was interesting that it wasn't, um, you know, um, everything that was switched on on the system didn't really become a problem. Now, syncing is an interesting one, and we, we're just um, at York St. John uh, starting to look at OneDrive. We've got it switched on half, uh, and we're going to be doing something in summer, we think, to uh, make it a bit more accessible and editable uh, within Word. Um, but yeah, the syncing is an issue, and as Richard mentioned, you know, it can sometimes depend on the user and if they realise whether they're in the right account. Because of course, they might have a, a OneDrive account with a personal email address. Um, yeah, Chris has said the sync is responsibility of the user. So, uh, so it's not always system error. Uh, it could be user error, not realising which account they're in and where they're sinking to. So of course that's a training issue, I would imagine. Um, but getting to all the students could be an issue, but that's something to bear in mind. So before we move on to talk about Yammer, Richard, um, is there anything in the chat? Uh, have you had a chance to have a little look, see if there's anything you want to speak about? I'm just checking through that now. Um, drive mapping is one that's come up. I know yes. Something that I, you know, it, it's a very attractive idea that you could log into your workstation, and um, then you just have a drive mapped to OneDrive for business. Um, but we did look at that briefly, and I'm aware there are companies out there that actually do that for people. But I, I would just reiterate, we don't think that's a very good I idea. That it's, yeah, it's it's something that p probably could could actually disappear at some point. With right. That. Okay. So that's, that's that would be our, you know, that's our, t that's our take on it. Um, right. No, it's things that maybe with placeholders, maybe that that with with the advent of placeholders, then that may obviate the need for a drive mapping. You just ha you just be able to see all your files from a from from a folder on your client anyway. So um, watch this space. I think. Yeah. Thanks. Um. Luke, Luke's asked, can staff sync to personal devices? Um. For personal, did you mean personally owned? Personally owned devices are policy. Yeah, mm. yeah the answer is yes, isn't it? Rick? Well, well, we do. We do. I think under under terms of the policy of the university, we're not. You're not supposed to use your sort of your your, for example, your daughter's laptop to store university data. For personal devices like laptops, then yes, they can sync. Yeah. We don't actually. Yeah. We don't actually manage that. You can. Um, I think with OneDrive, you can actually block syncing. For machines which are not domain joined, um, that's something that we may look at going forward. Because under um, currently, most our laptops aren't domain joined, but as part of the encryption program, we are domain joining laptops. So maybe at some point in time, we might might strengthen that. Can I come in, Richard? Yes, Chris. So one issue is people can sync. Um, you know, I'm doing this. I'm sat on a PC in uh, in work. But I'm syncing most of the folders that I'm syncing to the PC I've got in front of me to my PC at home. Now, the content in those folders, because I'm working on Office 365, is mostly Office 365 stuff, so there is no security risk. I have a couple of folders that in OneDrive that would contain sensitive data, and those folders are synced to my secure PC in my office where I am now, but they are not synced to my uh, PC at home, which my wife and my my youngsters can get to, and that's the training issue. Yeah, yeah interesting. Thank you for your input there, Chris. Um, okay, Richard. So uh, I shall uh, mute my microphone and uh, pass over to you again. Thank you. Okay. okay so. 
as I mentioned in the um, previous section on OneDrive, we actually made Yammer available um, before we actually released OneDrive for business. Um, that wasn't quite the way it was supposed to happen, but actually it was quite fortuitous because he gave us a tool then which we could disseminate and um, share with people knowledge around OneDrive for Business. So Yammer, which is part of the Office 365 tenancy, um, is it's actually a different beast to the rest of Office 365. Microsoft took over Yammer um, many moons ago. Um, and they are still currently working on integrating Yammer fully into Office 365. So prior to January tw um, 2016, we had people, pe parts of Yammer, they could just register with a Cardiff address, but we had no control over, the, over that, that um, thing. So they could post anything there. Um, that they wanted, we didn't have any control over it. So our first major step with Yammer was to take was to enterprise enable the domains Cardiff.ac.uk, um, so that we could actually, at the very least, have a situation where if somebody did put something up that that was questionable, we would have the ability then to remove it. So we dem we integrated the domains into our Office 365 tenancy in January 2016. Um, we did have um, around Yammer. We did provide again, like we did for OneDrive, we provided training. Um, we created an all staff group within Yammer, which all staff members are added to, um, sort of general forum, if you like, for people to share information about things from social events within the university to um, information on training. And the service was actually launched in what we have uh, was called University Speak Week. We have a week where we, where staff and groups present on various um, things around the university, a general thing, to getting to getting people to talk to each other, to meet and collaborate on various things. And and that's really what we did with Yammer. And so, though every every member of staff is licensed for Yammer. We have approximately 2,000 active users. So, out of a total staff population of 6,000 in a year, that's not too too bad. Um, so, it's not for everybody. Um, some people see see it as a possibly as a waste of time, but other people do collaborate. Um, we find it useful from a technical perspective to share information and collaborate on stuff. Um, so, that's worked pretty well, and it was certainly um, a very good. Um, addition to our, to our tool set for rolling out OneDrive for business. Um, Yammer is not standing still. Um, some of you may be aware that Microsoft recently introduced integration into the main Office 365 tenancy. So if you now create a public group within Yammer, you will now get, as part of that, a, a res an Office 365 group, a SharePoint site, a planner, and a OneNote notebook. Um, and that's only the beginning of their integration. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Yammer and groups in a little moment. But, but that was a fairly straightforward piece of work to do, which I think has had benefits to, to the university. Should I, can I say something quickly about the adoption piece? Um, or do you or time? Can you do, can, yeah, can, can you just tell Chris? Yeah, fine. I'll just, I'll just so, Moving on to the digital workplace, I mentioned that OneDrive was, the business was was under the Information Security Framework program. We've now created a new program, which we're still um, working on the remit. But a key part of this remit is rolling out Office 365 technologies um, to support the aims of the digital workplace. So moving towards a paperless office, etc., getting people to collaborate, um, etc. So our next steps. If I refer you back to my slide where we originally um, talked about the IBM environment, where Notes and Domino, we also had um, a connections and quicker service. Um, these services still exist. They're running on very old versions of the software, and um, people still use them for services which are key to the university. So we need to migrate 
these services from these legacy applications. So connections are things like blogs, wikis, um, activities, etc. Quicker is a document repository um, solution which allows people to share files internally and externally and also allows people to set up as authors, editors, readers, etc. So we've identified three migration paths from this IBM tool set to Office 365. Um, some are Yammer, so most of the connections um, usage would probably go into Yammer. We've identified Office 365 groups and SharePoint Online, which will then cover the, the remainder. Okay, so as I mentioned, majority of the use is document repositories with or without granular permissions. We actually believe now that Office 365 groups will be able to meet most of these requirements. You can actually set with, with you can actually set um, granular permissions within Office 365 groups um, now, um, and we've verified with Microsoft that this is something that is intended. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about groups um, in the next slide. Um, so our next steps really is to develop develop Office 365 groups as a service and put in place a support structure. So we need to train people in the use of it, we need to provide documentation on what, what it's best used for, etc. And we need to obviously do due diligence on how we manage and administrate groups. But as I said, groups is currently available. Um, I think at the last count we had about 1,500 groups created. Um, that was probably a month or two ago. I, we can only see that growing because everything in Microsoft seems to create a group these days. So as well as Yammer, Microsoft Teams, which has just been released, creates groups. So we do need to get down on this and really um, work out um, support structure. So that's our key. That's our key next step is to define groups as a service. So. Um, I don't know how well you can see that slide, but that's an example of a group, and I've chosen the OneDrive for Business Staff Service Transition as, as that. So within groups, you can have a conversation. Now, until recently, that conversation was an Outlook conversation, so that would happen through the Outlook client or on the Outlook web client, um, which is basically just people replying to an email. If you create a group, if you create a Yammer group, then the associated Office 365 group is actually um, the conversation is then held in Yammer. Okay, so you can choose which type of group that you want, um, and, that and that will have impact then on what conversation you have. You have a shared calendar within groups. You also have a file view. Now the files, if you send somebody in an Outlook conversation an attachment, that will appear in the file view. It, there's also a document repository within groups that provides that as well. There's a notebook, and then there are connectors which connect to various third-party applications. You get an Office 365 planner, and you get a site. You get a team site. So you get a SharePoint team site within Office 365 groups. Now, I've Microsoft's aim here is for people to create their own SharePoint sites. Um, I think that's um, the intention. Um, I've coined the term, it's self-service SharePoint. So where traditionally, if somebody wanted a SharePoint site, they would have to go to their IT admin. Within um, groups, you can now create, you, can, you actually have a team site. So, and you can add or delete people to that. You can set up a web part to it, and you can set up a document repository and you can also set permissions within that library. Um, so this is this is Microsoft's aim, is, to, is I think the phrase is used so that you, you don't have to bother IT, um, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your perspective. Um, but groups, the, the site bit of groups is SharePoint. If you go into SharePoint online, by default you will now get a modern group created. So if you press on the Create Site button, you'll get a, mo a modern group created. If you want to go back to the classic style, then you need to um, contact your admin. Um, 
teams. Um, so this was made available to education about a month ago in a switched off state, which seems quite unusual for Microsoft because they tend to put everything on. There was a reason for this, I believe, which is something to do with data protection, data governance laws in the states, which meant that Teams was not made available to education tenancies until recently. Um, if any of you have looked at the admin console, you now have the option to switch Teams on for staff or students or, sta or staff and students. So they, they've um, made a difference there between staff and staff and students, which I guess is to handle the um, education side of things. And then, as I mentioned before, looking in the admin console is a good idea. I think that was on sometime last Friday, they made an announcement that Teams will actually be enabled by default from mid-April. So if you haven't de-licensed Teams, in your tenancy, then it's going to appear in your tenancy from mid-April. So that's um, a change that was announced last week. So just to sum up um, some of the um, benefits and challenges that we face, um, it provides functionality that we would struggle to maintain and provide ourselves. There is no way, I think, that we could release all these services if we had to build these in-house um, and uh, stuff. There's, it's people, we do have people clamoring for things like Teams. We do have people who want this ability to collaborate. Um, so I think from, from that perspective, it's providing us something that we would probably struggle to, to deliver. It obviously... Um, the counter on that is that we have up challenges arise from other areas, trying to make, to keep up with the pace of change, but um, we think that that benefit probably exceeds that that downside. Um, again, we the the platform is generally very well received. I might or it might be a case of we don't get as many complaints as we have previously. So if people don't complain, things must be good. Um, the ability, the accessibility from many clients is obviously um, very important. Um, though I would probably say your best, the best, your best experience in Office 365 is if you're using a Windows box with Office 2016 Pro Plus. They have made significant improvements to um, Office on the Mac. They they are developing that, so I think the things you know, and they've also got good, I think, support for mobile clients on iOS and Android, um, which is very important these days. Um, so the pace of change is particularly rapid at the moment, um, particularly around, uh, um, particularly I think around the collaboration stuff. Exchange is pretty mature, um, but all the stuff around the collaboration um, teams and groups is happening very quickly in Yammer. Things mostly are flagged. As I say, if you keep an eye on the admin center, you do get a good idea of what's happening. They do provide updates. Stuff does still go through without warning. Um, and that's, that's, I think, is just a risk. I think from our perspective, we just have to live with that. Um, obviously, sometimes products are released, not completely finished. I remember when Groups was first released, that didn't seem particularly interesting. Um, how little did I know then? Um, and that was released with very little admin control. It's still developing, and things are becoming much more. Um, that's becoming much more mature in its um, um, the way it looks. Okay, I think that's me done. Okay, thank you, um, Richard. That was really, really interesting, and I've uh, been watching the chat as well. There's been some interesting uh, points made on the left-hand side, uh, which we can um, have a little chat about. Uh, I'm just looking at the clock. Uh, before we move on to the um, next conference that you guys are, are, are delivering in May, uh, if we could just like sum up um, the second half of your presentation. Um, so... There was quite a bit of chat about confusing students if there were too many choices of um, what was offered to them, 
with their um, situations. I'm trying to think who it was. I think it was Thomas Ferrand. Um, so that was quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you want to have a little look, Richard, in the chat, see if there's anything you want to pick out there just to chat about. Um, I don't think it's just confusing to students. I think it probably can be confusing for staff as well. Um, that's one thing. Yeah, that true. To, um, that, um, just going. That's interesting. The staff is more, more concerned about that. Yeah. Well, one thing I didn't mention, people are using notebook um, for sharing stuff and actually using those almost like a web you know for putting systems up developing handbooks um, that's something we found people using um, without without any sort of instigation from us right sounds good so that's instead of having the old sort of way of having a handbook yeah. available on the yeah, vla just, yeah, all right creating out of um, sharing notebooks yeah oh wow sounds good yeah, I think Lorraine mentioned as well about case studies. I think it's always um, really valuable uh, being able to have um, somewhere or an institution that's um, installed something that's worked and how they've installed it. Obviously, uh, this webinar is a way of uh, sharing good practice in that way. Uh, but also case studies are valuable. So if anybody um, does want to submit any case studies to us, uh, then we are always open to uh, sharing that good practice. Um, anything else, Richard, that you can see so. in there? Just mm. scrolling down. There's a lot of chat, isn't there? There is a lot of chat. Um, I mean, this uh, I've recorded this um, on screen o -matic, so it's the first time I've uh, recorded a webinar using that, so I'm hoping it's worked um, it still says it's recording so this will be available after uh, today's webinar so anybody who's not been able to attend uh, will be able to watch it afterwards okay so um yeah of course is that chris because you mentioned something about adoption it's pick up on what richard was saying about constantly changing so one of the problems we've got is, is in the chat there is that microsoft is making available a lot of functionality which in, on one level duplicates itself but actually if depending on your 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 circumstances your context and your practice it's it's not duplicating it for you so you've got teams you can run a group in a team but like slack but it's quite can be quite noisy or you can run a group in yammer which is much slower and more asynchronous so one of the issues we've got is lots of choice but Microsoft are going to basically make it available whether you want it or not once you're in the environment. So we, we've got to kind of ride all these different things. And Microsoft is, it really wants to push out its functionality. Um, and we somehow got to present, I think this is a value for IT. We've got to be, users haven't got time to investigate this stuff. Not most of them haven't. So we've got to be able to present a really clear idea of how to get maximum value for their context of what they're trying to do. Sounds sensible. Thank you, Chris, for your input. Um, okay, so um, if there's nothing else um, for the moment about um, our webinar today, we'll move on to our conference. So um, if Gareth or Lorraine could put a link to uh, signing up in the chat, that would be really useful. So the next um, conference is on Wednesday the 24th of May for two days. At Southampton Solent University Conference Centre. Now that looks like a fantastic venue. Um, I've looked at it on Google Images and it looks great. There's some really um, nice looking uh, architecture there. So if um, for no other reason it's worth going just to see uh, the red pod. So please take a look and you are very welcome to sign up for the conference. Uh, thank you, Gareth. He has put the uh, URL in there for, for you in the chat if you're interested. Okay, so um, thanks again to Richard. That was really useful. And to Lynn Rees uh, for your input in the chat. And also to Chris Graves. So um, really uh, valued your input today. And 
we have got a poll here ready for you to give us an idea of how you found um, the webinar today. So uh, that's looking good. So I'm just going to see if I can show results to everybody. So nobody said not at all useful, so that's um, a good sign. We're not wasting our time. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Some people said slightly useful. So um, it, it is not anonymous, so I'll find you and I will hunt you down. But no, I'm only joking. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, we will have our next uh, webinar, uh, or 60 Minutes Tech Talk, advertised very soon. And I shall sign out now. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.